I'm a senior at the University of Rochester studying electrical and computer engineering and I'm also minoring in business. I'm part of Sadaka, the Student Association for the Development of Arab Cultural Awareness, and I'm also part of Students for Democratic Society, SDS. Sadaka brought uh, Reverend Handler, but SDS was also attending the event. Yeah, about 63 people attended the event. And they, they weren't all at the same time in the room, they in and out, but about 63. Yeah. I was contacted by Elaine from Christians Witnessing Palestine, and they're the ones who brought him over uh, along with JV. Jewish Voices for Peace. So I read the email and I saw Reverend Handler's bio and I thought it would be appropriate because we really need to talk about the systematic injustices that have are happening, not just in the US but in Palestine as well. And I feel like there, there's a lot of misconception between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. So we don't really get to talk a lot about uh, criticizing the government um, in Israel because it might be a little sensitive. Um, so I thought that would be an opportunity to open it up, have a safe discussion. You know, it, college campuses are the best venue for such intellectual discourse. So I thought it would be appropriate to bring him up, um, show the students another perspective that might not be the same narrative that they've always heard, but it's really important to to face those different beliefs in order to you know, see the other side. Basically, it's all about um, dis discriminating the a group of people, right? Um, in the U.S., it's, it happens to be African Americans versus the police. In Israel, it happens to be the Palestinians uh, living ju not just in Palestine, but also in Israel. And it varies, of course. Um, you could see slight discrimina slighter discrimination, for example, in um, Israel, uh, just because it's within the boundaries between um, the Israeli state where there are like a lot of civilians. But then once you get out of those borders, once you go to the Palestinian side, you could see a difference, um, a huge difference in, in treatment uh, between the Palestinians and whether it's Jewish uh, citizens or American citizens. Um, so yes, in, 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 in the US, in the same sense, there there's this, this kind of discrimination. Uh, it might not be as obvious. Well, last year was kind of obvious with the whole Ferguson events, but like it started out, you know, the same like light dose, you know, racism, and then it gets it gets bigger and bigger until you have the people fed up, until you have a riot. And we can also see that in Palestine, like, all right, we, we're under occupation, we can deal with it just because like your survival instinct kicks in and you're like, all right, I can get used to this. But then eventually there's only so much um, discrimination you can get. Like uh, just last week, I don't know if it was before or after Reverend Hagler spoke, um, this um, uh, woman from Jerusalem was just walking down the street unarmed, um, and but she happened to be wearing burqa. Um, and the Israeli army just shot her. Um, and you could see that also happening here with civilians who be walking unarmed, but they just happen to be of the wrong color or the wrong, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a hoodie or a burqa or like, you know what I mean? So it, it, you could see such similarities. Um, Yeah, what, how we thought of it, all media is good media, right? <laughs> so, as you mentioned. Um, so, we were kind of surprised, to be honest. So, we first invited him over to Ovar, and we didn't think much of, you know, the whole controversy with um, the other school. But then, once we heard that the Divinity, like Crozier, Colgate Crozier School at, in Rochester canceled his talk, we were contacted by the administration. Um, 
and they were actually supportive. I want to give a, a shout out to Yulvar for actually being supportive and not as bureaucratic as <laughs> I thought it would be. Yeah, they actually handled it pretty well. So they were mainly concerned about the safety of Reverend Hagler just because he got death threats um, in the other areas. So it was important for the school to make sure the event will go you know, smoothly. So they supported us and they provided security. Obviously, they needed to have that talk with us, make sure that what he's going to be talking about is within the acceptable uh, boundaries of schools policies in regards of, you know, uh, public speaking and like freedom of speech and all that. Um, so we had that talk with the school. I had my, um, a, you know, meeting with my advisor and we worked it out pretty well. And we were very glad because people actually like showed up, not just from the school, but from outside, which we don't get. You Oftentimes, uh, in events at U of R are very student oriented and you only get that pop like student population. But then we saw that nice interaction between members of the Rochester community and students, uh, which was a nice change. And people were very engaged and they asked a lot of great questions. So. I mean, personally, I think when we were talking, just like connecting the dots, because I never thought, like I already knew that, um, you know, discrimination is a global theme, it happens everywhere, but then the specific examples he gave was just like eye-opening, and that's why like I linked the incident that happened last week with that. Like from now on, I start seeing those similarities. Like what I was saying, like that hoodie and that burqa. Like I started linking specific events together, and that's really nice. Um, and it was cool to give a, a history brief on the creation of Israel and like the you know, different. Um, The whole week was a complete freak out. Like the e board, I'm on the e board of so the executive board of Sadaka, so like we oversee um, events that Sadaka sponsor and all that. And we got like the president, me, and other like members got constant Facebook messages, emails, calls. Um, yeah, because like I personally know a lot of. Um, Jewish friends at U of R too who were also concerned so it wasn't just the administration and like formal there was also an informal justification like through Facebook and all that that we owed to our Jewish friends so we had like a lot of those concerned emails and we weren't entirely sure if the event is actually going to happen until the night before um, yeah we were like on the brink of, of you know yeah, the, we were very close but we we stood our grounds like we knew we were going to have the event the only like reason we wouldn't have had it if we didn't get the administration's approval like we were already willing to um, debate intellectually with any concerned members of the University of Rochester and we were willing to you know put that extra effort and push that extra mile to bring him over My, our only concern was just the administration not um, agreeing with him, you know, but they, they, they surprisingly were very supportive, which was super nice, and they were concerned about his security and all that. Not, not to my knowledge, no, none of us, to be fair, they were like mainly debates that are based on links of, um, Reverend Hagler being on stage with anti-Semitic uh, groups and they were like he might not be anti-Semitic himself but we need that justification so we we were talking about it but it wasn't like a hated debate it wasn't personal at all it was just like you know the kind of debate college students have um, and I was very glad to see students you know interacting with with us, with the speaker, to like get the gist of it and you know get the truth. I mean, I can understand. So like, I try my best to put myself in their shoes, and it's not necessarily them going after what he's saying. Um, 
they would they were agreeing with us that an intellectual debate needs to happen on college campuses and it's not it doesn't always have to be a safe space you know like you don't have to be in that protective bubble on campus you need to see the world in order to widen your perspective um, oftentimes it was just the fact that it got when, it, when we talk about the Palestinian-Israeli issue, it gets personal because you, al you also have the Jewish identity along with Israel. Like, you can't talk about Israel without talking about the Jewish identity. It's intertwined. And oftentimes it gets personal in the sense that you can't, there is a thin line between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. And we're trying to clear that up. So it was, it was just that um, issue with students. Um, with administration, it wasn't that they were concerned about like anti-Semitism. They knew like we weren't going to, you know, do any anti-Semitic propaganda. Like, no, that's not. That's definitely not our purpose. Yeah, they knew like it was going to merely be a talk on systematic injustices and linking it between Ferguson and, and Palestine. Um, but their concern was more of like, is it? A, is it going to be so controversial that the school will be in jeopardy or like the school security will be in jeopardy? That's that's all. That was their main, that was their main concern from the administration point of view. Um, yeah, there there wasn't any like academic you know, discourse um, problems because everyone was on the same page. But there were, yeah, there, we actually, it's funny because when we were talking about it, we remembered this event that happened last year about uh, Professor Salida, if you have heard of him. So he's a professor um, who got a tenured offer, a uh, professor, who, yeah, from University of Illinois, and then it got revoked and he claims it's because like the University of Illinois um, didn't like his Twitter comments, tweets during the Gaza war and we were we hosted him to talk about like academic freedom and like speech and yeah it was it was such a great event it was very well attended I think it was like a hundred people in, in there it was like a much larger room and um, yeah, because he was only speaking at the University of Rochester, as far as I know, while Reverend Hagler only, sp I mean, spoke at both, like, German House, two places. Right, so people had that other option, a lot, especially, like, 2 p.m., like, in the middle of a work day. So, but yeah, uh, when Professor Salida came, we spoke specifically about how do you draw the line between freedom of speech and offending others. Um, and it was a great discussion that needed to happen on campus. And I think that widened a lot of people's perspective. And we referenced that a lot with our, um, you know, talks with concerned students. With Hagler coming. Yes, with Hagler coming. We're like, remember when Salida came? Remember we were talking about this? We have already established this. There's freedom of speech on campus. Yeah, I think I would just like to thank Reverend Hagler, obviously, for bringing such an important um, discussion on campus. And I would like to thank JVP and CWP for helping us, and obviously all our co-sponsors. Yeah, and shout out to Sadaka for making it happen. <laughs> Journal with a hard times, tales from the dark side, evidence of the settlements on my hard drive. Man, I swear my heart died at the end of that car ride. When I saw that checkpoint, welcome to apartheid. Soldiers wear military green at the checkpoint. Automatic guns, that's machine at the checkpoint. Tables not M16s at the checkpoint. Fingers on the trigger, you'll get leaned at the checkpoint. Little children going to dogs and teens at the checkpoint. All your papers better be clean at the checkpoint. Gotta put your finger on the screen at the checkpoint and pray that red Life turns green at the checkpoint And Martin Luther King had a dream at the checkpoint He wake with loud screams from the scenes at the checkpoint Is Malcolm X by any means at the checkpoint Imagine if your daily routine was the checkpoint And Martin Luther King had a dream at the checkpoint He wake with loud screams from the scenes at the checkpoint Is Malcolm X by any means at the checkpoint Imagine if your daily routine was the checkpoint Separation walls that surround in the checkpoint On top is barbed wire like a crown on the checkpoint Better have your permits if you found at the checkpoint, coming on the tower, aiming down at the checkpoint.